There's a new lucrative investment opportunity that American businessmen are cashing in on in the Dominican Republic. Poor teenage baseball prospects. I come from the real estate business. Uh, if, if you can make 10, 15%, uh, that's a good return. I expect that we're going to do uh, better than that in baseball. I'm Michael Schmidt, reporter for the New York Times. Over several weeks in the Dominican Republic, I reported on a new phenomenon. American businessmen with few ties to baseball are financing Dominican trainers who are trying to sell their teenage players to major league teams. The success of the investors are based on the number of players who make it and how big their contracts are. The investors have included former U.S. government officials, lawyers, and a dentist from California. They are trying to profit from a baseball system that has exploded with talent over the past two decades. Are we there to make a profit? Absolutely. Gary Goodman is a real estate lawyer from Cranford, New Jersey. Well, right now, I, I, I practice law, and I, I run a little real estate company, uh, and I do the baseball. He is one of several American investors to finance various baseball academies in the Dominican Republic over the past several years. We have about half a million dollars tied up in the operation. I feel that what we're trying to uh, bring to it is a level of professionalism to try and raise the standards uh, of the academies, to try and improve the conditions which these kids live under. The investors typically wire money to trainers, known as Buscones, on a monthly basis to cover operating costs. In return, the investors are guaranteed a percentage of the player's signing bonuses, which can range from several thousands of dollars to several million. Typically, the percentage is far higher than agents receive from players in the United States. There's a lot of times 20, 25, uh, uh, 30. Alfredo Arias is Gary Goodman's business partner. Uh, it depends on what the length of the time, the amount of work that we estimate we, we, we got to do with this kid. The amount of talent he has, it may vary in many ways. There you go. Did a business plan like any startup and found some investors, <laughs> also known as my father. Greg Maroney opened his baseball academy in the Dominican Republic in 2007. You're a better photographer than me, for real. In October, he and his head trainer from the Dominican Republic, Carlos Polino, were at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Their major league client, Neftali Feliz, is the star rookie closer for the Texas Rangers, who were taking on the Yankees in the American League Championship Series. Twelve players have signed since our academy's been operating. We recruit all over the island. You know, we try to build kind of a, I guess you call it unity, or kind of a networking system down there. If they want to be involved in this kind of activity and generate some sort of investment profit, it could be a positive. But they need to make sure that it is a positive. Sandy Alderson, now the Mets general manager, was appointed by baseball commissioner Bud Selig in early 2010 to revamp its operations in the Dominican Republic. It's not just mailing in a check to some mutual fund and hoping that you're going to get a return. No, there's a direct relationship with uh, individuals, kids, and they're as responsible for those conditions with those kids as the independent trainer, as Major League Baseball, as others. The academies are not regulated by the Dominican government or Major League Baseball. The conditions range from high-end to less desirable. Well, right now, the money that we're making, we really need to put back into the facility. We've got to put air conditioning in the dormitory. I find the food pretty good. Is the bed that good? No. We need to improve the, the bedding that we have down there. But then again, for many of these young men, it's an improvement. At Greg Maroney's Academy in the small countryside town of Don Gregorio, high fences and barbed wire surround the property. 
We were told by Maroney's head trainer that this was to prevent boys from sneaking out at night to meet girls in town. But Greg Maroney refuted that claim. In a lot of countries, that's kind of the security measures. I mean, even the United States, you've got barbed wire to keep bad things and bad people out. We're not running a concentration camp. At Maroney's Academy, many teenage prospects do not attend school. Ultimately, we do want to have education. We've joined with the Peace Corps. He knows a few Americans that are down there that have come in and taught some of the kids basic health stuff, right? Like hygiene and protecting yourself from stuff. Yeah. So when you do come to the U.S., you kind of have a sense of what to expect. These are kids that are 12 to 16 years old. And think about the kids that never even sign a professional contract. There are a tremendous number of misses, and these are human beings. These are people who have given up other possibilities, foregone other opportunities, have not gone to school. At Arias and Goodman's Academy in San Pedro de Macorís, a talent-rich area east of Santo Domingo, there is no formal education. However, an instructor comes in twice a week to teach the players baseball English. Don't forget, some of these kids come out of so much poverty. Uh, they don't even know how to write, they don't even know how to read. Of the half dozen boys we spoke to, all had some level of high school education. We asked them what they will do if their career in baseball doesn't work out. Continue studying. Continue studying. Continue studying. But the kids are given very little preparation for life after baseball. Gary Goodman prefers the topic not be discussed with his prospects to introduce the subject of failure and what are you going to do when your baseball career doesn't uh, pan out. I don't necessarily think that uh, that's probably a good topic for us to introduce uh, in the locker room and in the clubhouse. You just hope that you left uh, some sort of a print in their life. Do not go the other way around. Don't get into gangs. Don't get into this and the other. You can only hope. Arius believes the academy will probably make a million dollars in profit this year. We've been very blessed by God uh, in terms of uh, the rate of return as compared to what we put in. Yeah, it's, it's my hope that we're going to see a, a, a good return. There is a demand for this type of talent. We're not trying to change the country overnight, but we do have a vision and we're taking it step by step. And we honestly do want to change things for the better.